Hey guys, I'm doing another thrift store makeover today. This one's not gonna be another modern spooky makeover. Done enough of those for now. Going back to basics today. I picked up this mailbox at the thrift store. $2.99. I know the dollar store has a ton of mailboxes this time of year, but they're all made of cardboard. This one's made of wood, so it's a bit better quality. And I, and I liked that. Now that's quality. It has a... <laughs> mm, strange smell to it. Woo! Scent with love. I don't know if they meant to misspell scent or if it's actually a play on words. Like maybe this was used to store dog poop in. That would explain the scent. Mm. Or maybe it was a flower vase of some sort. I'm just guessing it was because it's covered in butterflies and flowers. Oh, oh the, the creativity. creativity. I'm not entirely sure why there's two openings. <gasps> it's open from up here, but you can also open it from the door in the front. Convenience, perhaps. If you're in a rush, you don't even have to open the mailbox. You can just throw stuff in here. I like that. Efficient. So this comes with this little flag thing that mailboxes always have. Very realistic. I appreciate that. It also has a little turny thing to help the door stay closed, which is necessary because if that wasn't there, the door would just kind of flap down. No one likes a flappy door. It's pretty spacious, but not too long. So it can only really fit like short letters. Don't try sending Santa a whole grocery list. Just one or two things. Three if you've been extra nice this year. I'm starting off by pulling out my toolkit. This is my toolkit. It's all it consists of. It's one of those little multi-tools that contains everything you need. This time I'm using the baby screwdriver to disassemble everything, or at least as much as possible. I just didn't want any paint getting on them. It was pretty easy to take them off. Here's the loot, just gonna save those for later. Upon closer inspection of the door, I realized it had this piece of tape stuck to it. Not sure what purpose that serves. Those flowers aren't going anywhere, so I pulled the tape off. Next I turned my attention to the body of the mailbox. Looking pretty good, just has some stickers stuck to its buttocks that I'm pulling off. I pulled out the acetone to really get a good scrub. It actually started removing some of the paint on the mailbox. Worked a little too well. It almost looks like the mailbox is made out of cardboard or that cheap kind of chipboard. But I assure you, it's not. No. It's made of nice premium oak or some kind of tree. I'm going in with white for a base coat. I'm not using gesso on this one, just kind of using my white multi-surface paint. I think since it's multi-surface, it might double as a primer. Not sure. I honestly think it worked just as well as gesso. Sealed in everything. If the box deteriorates or something later on, then I'll let you guys know and we can bring it back to the goodwill. But for now, things are going great. Good for you. There's some little crevices and stuff inside the mailbox. Wasn't too hard to paint though, especially since the top is open. Really gave me plenty of different angles to work with. I imagine it would be harder to paint if the top was closed. I've seen enough butterflies and flowers for a lifetime. Honestly, their appearance is just offensive at this point. The dark side is having none of it, so I'm just covering that up. No one wants to see that. Sadly, I can't do too much about the little flower design on the flag. I'm just kinda hoping it'll blend in with everything. My red background got a little dirty, so I just switched to green. Still fits with the Christmas vibe, so I hope there won't be any complaints. This whole thing is in pretty good condition. The only thing I'd say is that there's a bit of texture on the box. My old enemy. I tried covering it up with enough layers of paint, but it's still kinda peeking through a little bit. Not too much I can do about it, but I'll add enough distractions to make it presentable. I want this mailbox to be a nice, moody gray. <laughs> Not the most Christmassy color, but I was going for more of an evil, moody Christmas vibe. I honestly didn't even need to paint it white to begin with, but you know, maybe it helps. The inside was too bright and white and pathetic, <laughs> so I painted that black. Much better. More suited to the dark side. So now that all the background colors are done, I can finally move on to the good Ooh. stuff. It already looks more evil if I do say so myself. I'm going to be painting a big Christmas scene wrapping around the mailbox, starting off with the door. This one's going to be the centerpiece of the design. I actually drew it slightly off center. That was intentional. I guess. 
I've never drawn sprinkles before. He's made a couple in-person appearances. Hey, everybody. <laughs> but he's never gotten to be the main character. So today I'm giving him some time to shine. I wanted it to look like he's kind of jumping into frame. He has some outfits in his wardrobe. More outfits than I'm comfortable admitting. I got a little carried away. Whenever I come across an 18 inch doll outfit, I just kind of snatch Ooh, it up. let me get that, let me get that. Oh, let me get this, this too. They just fit him so perfectly and he just looks so funny so I can't help myself. Today he's dressed up in his Santa gear, standard red attire. I drew him in this pose where he's holding Christmas lights in front of his face. He's really partying it up this season. The Christmas lights are kinda gonna tie the whole mailbox together. They're just gonna be wrapped around the whole thing. The next character I chose to draw is Boo Boo, one half of the Honey and Boo Boo dynamic duo, in all her baby ogre glory. Boo Boo is the crazier of the two ogres. She's feisty, and she definitely bites. I'm gonna bite your face. If you're new here and you don't want a couple Boo Boo bites, you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. You don't want to mess with Boo Boo. She's always overwhelmed with how cute Sniffledorf is. I mean, who could blame her? He's a little supermodel. So she just kind of pounced on him and is cradling him like a baby. Rock-a-bye baby on the treetop. He loves that. Honestly, Boo Boo and Sniffledorf have a lot in common yeah, with their biting so tendencies and all. Sniffledorf is a mostly black cat. It can be kind of hard to draw all his little outlines and facial features, especially on such a small scale. But he's got his little beard and his oversized crazy eyebrows and whiskers, so hopefully you can tell it's him. Boo Boo wasn't entirely watching where she was going. She never really is. A little clumsy. So she tripped and got tangled in all the Christmas lights. Just another day on the dark side. I thought it needed something up in the corner, so I added a little thought bubble coming from Sniffledorf. He's a pretty quiet cat, doesn't really talk much or meow, but he makes it apparent that he doesn't like to be grabbed. He's not a cuddle cat, so I imagine he's just laying there thinking, I'll kill you. Probably pretty accurate. All right. On the opposite side, I wanted it to be a scene of a couple characters putting ornaments on my spooky tree. My spooky tree isn't a typical Christmas tree. It's more of a dead, withered looking tree that doubles as my Halloween tree and Christmas tree. Versatility. Saving money. Trevor's at the top of the tree. He's honestly doing most of the decorating work. I don't know where the dark side would be without him. Thanks again, Trevor, for all your hard work. This scene is kind of like one of those group projects where Trevor just does everything. Of course, I couldn't separate Honey and Boo Boo. Boo Boo would never allow that to happen. So Honey's here too. He's just kind of sitting there, having a good time. Really able to enjoy the festivities today, since Boo Boo's tied up at the moment. I also drew a little green goblin. He's trying to fit in at the Christmas party, so he wore his ugliest sweater and reindeer ears. Some people have those ugly sweater parties for Christmas. This isn't one of those parties, though. A little overkill for the occasion. He's new. Not really familiar with everyone, so he's just standing there awkwardly, smiling politely, trying to fit in, but he sticks out like a sore thumb, mostly because he's overdressed, and most of the people at the party aren't wearing anything at all. It's not that kind of party. <laughs> It's just that ogres and ghosts don't really need to wear anything. Anyways, moving on. I put green and red ornaments on the tree. On my actual spooky tree, there are gold ornaments too, but I left those out. I try to avoid the gold Posca pens whenever possible. They just take a while to build up the color and they're kinda annoying. Sorry, Posca pens. I still love you. And of course, the lights would be wrapped around as well. On the back of the mailbox, I didn't really want to do more characters. I wanted to break it up a bit with some words. So I wrote, Seasons Creepings. Felt evil. I tried my best to write it in a sort of spooky font. I'm trying my best here. On the bottom, I drew a wonderful little motif of two little skulls. It's like a mistletoe type thing. I definitely wanted the Christmas lights to continue on the back. Like I said, it's supposed to tie the whole thing together, so I just wrapped those around, keeping with the continuity. I almost forgot about the flappy flag. I knew I didn't want to leave it plain gray. I just painted it red. I still wanted to add something to it. It needs a little something something, so I just went around and wrapped lights around it. They're just tangled there. It's a big mess, but it's a beautiful mess. I did some touch-ups here and there and cleaned up some outlines and whatnot. I had to put all the hard 
hardware back in its place. Luckily, I didn't have to clean those up since I removed them earlier. It's not hard acetoning the paint off at the end. I just think this gives it a cleaner look. Lastly, I didn't want the paint chipping off, so I went over everything with a few layers of glossy varnish. I wanted it to have that nice, shiny look. Makes it look professional. Not that I'm a professional. Here's the finished mailbox. I'm gonna go ahead and place my letter to Santa in it. I called my mom and she assured me Santa's coming this year. So that's a relief. Santa's getting so many letters. I'd hate for your letter to get lost in the fireplace. Click on the top right or bottom left to assure your letter's safe passage. 